Hey, welcome to Tricks for the Knicks, trick number three, or three, as they would say in Germany. <laughs> um, this might not be, this might be the last trick for Tricks for the Knicks video that I do, but definitely it'll be the last one for a little while. So what, what this will cover is how you can use Modulator 1 and Modulator 2 to create an ADSR envelope, because it's not so obvious just looking at the front, um, or actually variations on a multi-stage envelope, a five-stage envelope as well. And uh, it's going to be cut into two parts, this video. The first part will be examples, and the second part will be more the academic piece. And the target audience for the academic piece is kind of beginner, noob, to kind of medium, mediocre, in the middle, um, proficiency working with synthesizers. So, so watch the examples if you want to feel inspired, the video examples, and then go ahead and watch the academic part if you want to understand the reasoning behind how that works. So anyway, I'm drinking a, a Rogue Mocha Porter. Tasty stuff. And dark, I like dark beer, I have to confess. I like it a lot. So let's get on to tricks for the Knicks, trick number three, and wherever you are, whatever you're doing, cheers. Okay, so we have done the academic portion of this video, and now we're going to do an example with the actual Knicks after we explained it a little bit and show you how to set up that modulator one and modulator two to give it different uh, types of envelopes essentially just an ADSR or even an extra step so um, the important thing is that one of the modulators has to be set to hold and what that gives you is your sustain stage now Again, I've already explained this a little bit, but depending on how fast or how slow each of the modulators adds to the overall curvature or the rise and fall of the envelope, uh, depends on what the sound's like. So let's give you some examples. So right now, modulator one is on hold. So this level right here will determine the sustain stage of the whole envelope execution. Okay, so right now set up at even, it is a, it's only going through the first filter. Therefore, the first filter is 12 dB, two pole. So this is only a two pole example where both modulators are gonna be shaping the envelope that affects filter one. And again, modulator one will be, because it's hold, I've switched that to hold, We'll be setting or controlling the sustain stage. So, and again, it depends if this is rising or if this one is rising faster than this one, whichever one is, is going more quickly will affect the overall shape of the envelope. So... If we do this really quickly, we can see that. So this will do a real quick uh, rise and fall, and then the modulator, the modulator two will do a real quick rise and fall, and modulator one will do a slower rise up to the sustain level. And that's very similar to the example that I gave 
on the uh, routing examples. So. so can you hear that? This is the real quick part is this modulator and then the slow rise is modulator one. And this fall is actually controlling the release of the whole envelope. So you hear that at the end? So if I bring this down, the release will be quicker. fall, as I bring that down lower, then the release will be quicker for the whole envelope. The Dreadbox Nix can be kind of intimidating at first glance. It does have most of the usual controls that a normal synth has, like oscillators filters, and as we've already sort of shown in the video, modulators that can serve as envelopes. But these controls are arranged and labeled in a way that might make it hard to identify them at first. This video is focusing on creating and shaping envelopes on the Nix. The envelopes on the Nix aren't as obvious as, say, on the Erebus, which has these nicely illustrated ADSR knobs and the word envelope, so you can see that it's clearly labeled. Graphed out, a nice normal four stage ADSR envelope might look like this. Somehow, usually through a key press, an envelope is triggered, the attack phase or attack stage starts, the decay stage. Then it moves to the sustain stage, which usually loops until the key is released. And then it wraps up with a release stage. An envelope is really just a series of values used to modulate or change some other settings or parameters on a synthesizer over time. In the case of the Erebus, it's being used primarily to control the amount of filter cutoff, although that, that same envelope can be patched to affect other parameters. An envelope could also be used to control how loud a sound is, the amplitude, or even to control the pitch of an oscillator. Some oscillators can be much more complex. This is a six-stage envelope, where the attack and decay parts each have two stages. Cool, huh? This is a, an envelope for the died-before-its-time Alesis A6 Andromeda, and notice this puppy has seven stages. One, sustain, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It actually has two parts to the release stage. That's pretty cool. The awesome Casio CZ series of synths had nine stage envelopes, though for some reason Casio didn't consider the sustain stage, or step, as a stage, and it claimed it was an eight stage envelope. This was the first synth that I ever got comfortable programming, and I have to admit, I was a little disappointed when I discovered that most synths only had the much more common ADSR envelope. In fact, a lot of mono synths even had less than that. Now the Dreadbox Nix does have envelopes, they're just not as obvious as on the Erebus. The modulator section of the Nix has two envelopes, modulator 1 and modulator 2. And if you graph out how one of these modulators works, it can look something like this. Or like this. Each of the modulators behaves like a simple two-stage AD envelope, where the rise label refers to the attack 
and the fall label refers to the decay. There are two settings included with the modulator controls that affect how the modulators behave. This shows there is an LFO switch, which if it's switched on will cause the envelope to loop and it will behave more like a low frequency oscillator, hence the label LFO. And here you can see, here's one cycle of that looping, which is really just a small attack and decay envelope. If the hold switch right here or here is flipped on, it will force the envelope to have a sustained stage, and the two-stage envelope will now be turned into a three-stage envelope, where there's a rise or attack stage, hold or sustain, and then fall or release. And the sustain stage will hold until the key is lifted. So now that we understand that the Nix has not one, but two simple AD envelopes, labeled modulator 1 and 2, and yes, those AD envelopes can be turned into ASR envelopes, as I explained earlier in the videos, they can be combined to create more complex envelopes, even an ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release, four-stage envelope. To make this happen, though, the routing does need to be configured a certain way, basically like this. And what this does is it allows both modulators to control only one filter, thereby combining the two values of modulator or envelopes, one and two. So if we give one of the modulators a quick rise and fall, or attack and decay, and we set the second modulator to hold, creating a sustain stage, we would get something like this. Originally, I thought when the modulators were combined, they would look something like this. Where the resulting envelope was, was created from the higher of the mod 1 and mod 2 values. But I was wrong. Jeez. Actually, the two values of modulator 1 and modulator 2 are added together, producing an envelope that looks more like this. which forms a very nice ADSR envelope, eh? You can also form something like this. And this gives us an envelope with two attack steps, a decay, a sustain, and a release stage. Notice that this is actually a five-stage envelope, something you can't get out of the Erebus. Or we can do something like this. Once again, this gives us a five-stage envelope, though it's slightly different with an attack, a decay, a second attack, sustain, and then release in its final stage. An important point to remember is that the stages of, of analog envelopes rarely behave in a linear way. They usually exhibit a bit of exponential or logarithmic behavior, Meaning the different stages of the envelope are frequently not a straight line. They can look more like this. And that kind of wraps up the academic portion of this. So hopefully this extra part wasn't put you to sleep boring. And you got something out of that. This as well as the first part. And uh, remember, the academics are nice, but they're not critical. I've seen plenty of people who don't understand anything they're doing make some really awesome sounds and noise and music. So just experiment and have fun with it. That's really the bottom line. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense because um, I've seen on the forums that some folks just aren't quite processing how the modulator 1 and the modulator 2, they're not quite processing how they work and how they actually offer more flexibility, more, I don't know, control than just a standard ADSR envelope. It's a little harder to set up, but once you figure out how to set it up, 
it delivers. It's extremely nice. So anyway, there you go. There is the small lection lesson how to use modulator one and modulator two to basically just create an ADSR envelope or even a five stage envelope, which is extremely cool. So whatever you're doing, cheers.